going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I think that's what I said, uh, verse 12. Today I want to talk to you about continuing on and talking about fitting with God's timing. But it, we've been talking about to fit with his timing, I have to operate with the proper equipping, and that'll position me properly. So I want to get a little bit more into this equipping and positioning. Um, so today's title is called How to Win with What Fits. How to Win with What Fits, F I. T-S. How many guys want to win in everyday life? Okay, let me ask you this way. How many of y'all want to lose? Okay, how many of y'all want to win in everyday life? Oh yeah, every single one of us, we want to have victory. And did you know that God has designed your life to be a life of victory? Amen? A life of victory. I mean, I'm talking about everyday, y'all. Everyday victorious living is what God has designed for us. But as always, you know, we don't always feel like we achieve that. And I'm here to tell you today that if you flow with this timing, if you flow in his equipping and his purpose and his plan and his way, you should experience victory after victory after victory. Now, let me tell you this, that just because you want to experience victory doesn't mean you won't have battles. Amen? God promises a victorious life but he never said your life will be battle free. Amen. He just promises the victory. So the presence of battles in your life doesn't mean there'll be an absence of victory. To the contrary, the mere fact that there are battles, you should get excited at that because you know what's about to happen. Victory. Was that song we used to sing back in the day? Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is what? Mind, I told Satan to get where? Get thee behind. Victory today is mine. And that was a song we sang to remind ourselves that even though I'm in the midst of trouble, even though I'm in the midst of battle, even though I have attacks coming from the left, right, front, and behind, victory is still mine. Why? Because God promises that victory. To experience that victory, however, I have to make sure that I am properly equipped. And we talked a little bit about this on Wednesday, being properly equipped spirit soul, and body. My notes here, I wrote it down this way, that wrong equipping equals what? Wrong positioning. That if I am not equipped properly, I won't be positioned properly. I won't be positioned properly in my spirit, I won't be positioned properly so, or even in my body or my physical self, I won't be where I'm supposed to be at. And how many of you guys know that in order to reach the destiny that God has designed for you, you need to make sure you got your mind right. You got to make sure that you're saved. You got to make sure that you're focused on the finished works of Jesus and not on what can I do to achieve this victory. If you understand that, say amen. Now understand this, you will not fit or be in the right place at the right time. I'm going to say this a few times. Uh, glory to God. All right. You will, not, <laughs> you will not fit or be in the right place at the right time in the right way if you're not properly equipped. Let me say that a few more times. You will not fit in the right place at the right time in the right way if you're not properly equipped. But if you are not properly equipped, you'll ultimately end up lacking the power to win. Think about that. Think about our military. If they're not equipped properly, they don't have the right tools, then how can they expect to win victory? You know, you go into a modern day war and all you have is bows and arrows. I mean, guys know the wrong equipment to have you in trouble. Many people, many believers are living life today with the improper equipment and then they go out to try to face the battles that are coming in life and then they wonder, man, why can't I seem to get past this point? Why do I keep experiencing failure time and time again in this area? It's not that God doesn't love them, and it's not that God has not designed a destiny of victory for them. Oftentimes, it's improper equipment, which has led to improper positioning, which leads to failure. But I got good news for you today. There's a way to have the right equipment. There's a way to be in the right place at the right time in the right way, and there's a way to experience God's power in your life. Anybody interested in knowing what that is? Because the proper equipping gets you into the proper positioning for God's power to operate in your life. 
I'm just going to say this early so I don't fool around and run out of time later on. You have to have God's power to experience victory. We have to discontinue trying to do things in our own power. We have to discontinue trying to do things our own way. Somebody says, well, make that plainer. What does that sound like? We have to give up on our plans in order for God's plans to succeed. I think I said it this way a couple of weeks ago. Sometimes our plans have to fail in order for God's plans to prevail. God has a way for you. And some of y'all have, have experienced this even recently. You've been trying to do something and get something done, and you've been struggling, and it's like, why won't this work out? And then you finally just say, you know what? Forget it. I give up. And then the solution comes. And it's easier and more sweatless than what you were trying to do. But sometimes it's, it's ways, or most of the time it's ways that you hadn't even thought of, or let me say it this way, you didn't even think was possible. You didn't think you qualified for. You didn't think somebody would say yes for. And then you just kind of give up and say, you know what? Let me just ask. I just feel something in my heart. Something in my mind just keeps telling me just to, just to ask. Or just to go over here and check and see. I can't tell you how many times I've experienced breakthrough and victory in my life when I just follow that unction just to go and check and see. And it was at a time that I would have never thought of. And Holy Spirit just says, just pull off the road real quick and go over there and just check and see. And sometimes it's for stuff that I checked on in my timing and it didn't work out. But here I am on my way from somewhere else to somewhere else, not even thinking about that thing, and it'll come up in my spirit, go check and see right now. And because I've been equipped properly, learning how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, my positioning changes in my mind first, and I say, you know what, let me just go where he tells me to go. And it lines up with me then physically being in a place that I would not have planned to be in and then experiencing the manifestation of the blessing in my life all because I decided just to follow him. I'm trying to tell you today that you don't have to live a frustrated life any longer. But you got to change the way you're thinking. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to change the way you're thinking about how do you get results. How do you experience victory? It has to come by the leading of the Holy Spirit and operating in his timing, in his way, using the stuff that he gives you to get the results. We just got to get to the point that we got to just figure out the fact that we're just not as smart as we think we are. I'm not saying you got to dumb yourself down. I'm not saying that your education doesn't mean anything and this, that, and the other. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't hear that when you hear me making that statement. What I'm saying is, is you don't know the future. What I'm saying is, is you didn't design and create you. You didn't make this world. Amen? But the one who did lives on the inside of you. And it would be wise to humble ourselves enough to listen to him. Because trying it our own way just simply doesn't work. Can I get an amen? I'm educated. I'm experienced in a lot of different things, and it still doesn't work without him. Those things are vehicles that he may use to help me understand what he's telling me to do, but I've learned to put those things under and submit those things under his voice. Because I'm just going to say it real plain, y'all, sometimes God's voice doesn't make sense. Amen? Amen? It just doesn't make sense. He'll tell you to do something. He'll tell you to keep somebody involved. He'll tell you to let somebody go. He'll tell you to sow into this, or he'll tell you to withhold from that. And oftentimes it doesn't make sense, but how many of you guys know it works out because it's God? I have to figure out how do I get into his will, and when I get in there, how do I operate by his power? Now, I want to talk about this thing about things not fitting. There's a story that we read on um, Wednesday that we're going to pick back up on about David. And David literally experienced a lot of what we're talking about right now. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 12. And we're going to kind of hop around just for the sake of the story. But verse 12, it says, Now David was the son of a man named who? Jesse. 
and he was an Ephrathite from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons. Now let's skip down to verse 17. One day Jesse said to David, take this basket of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report on how they are doing. David's brothers were with Saul, who was the king, and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah. And they were fighting against the Philistines. So David's the younger brother, and he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. And his dad calls him and says, hey, take these supplies to your brothers. They're over there with the king, and they're in the middle of a fight or a battle with the Philistines. Skip down to, well, let's just keep reading. Verse 20, it says, so David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts, as Jesse, his father, had directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. Soon, the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. Verse 22, David left his things with the keeper of the supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking to them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the Israel army. So this is something he had been doing over and over again, Goliath. He said, as soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to do what? Run away. So they saw Goliath, and apparently he was so intimidating these guys begin to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men ask. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife. And the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Verse 26, David asked the soldiers standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Then this is very interesting. I want you to really pay attention to this. He said, who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed? Y'all see that? Who is this pagan Philistine that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Who does he think he is, is what David is asking. He's like, I don't care how big he is. I don't care how bad he is. Who does he think he is to open his mouth up against God? Against the people of God? It sounds to me, right off the bat, that David had a certain positioning in his thinking. He was already positioned in his mind that there's a certain way things should go when you're talking about my God. There's a certain way that people of God ought to be treated. And this, this, this is not the way. Amen? So he said, who does this guy think he is that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Verse 27. And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, there's a reward for killing them. But when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. Now, isn't that interesting? There's always haters around. There's always going to be haters around when you're operating in confidence in who you are in God. I want you to hear that. There's always going to be people that, and I'll say that, Holy Spirit, the way it just came to my heart. There'll be people who are jealous of your confidence. There'll be people who are jealous and envious of your faith. And because they aren't properly positioned because they haven't been properly equipped, they'll look funny at you and try to shut you down because they know that what you're saying and how you're flowing is really right. And because they're ill-equipped to do what you're doing, they'll talk down to what you're saying. They'll try to kick you out. What you're doing over there, go back to your church. Go back to your little Christian friends. Go back to this, that, and other. You ain't got no business over here. I know what you're really doing. I know you got ulterior motives. Don't let that discourage you. 
I said, don't let that discourage you from doing what God has called you to do. Don't let that move you away from where God's planted you. You got to understand, Jesse sent him. He didn't go there himself. His father sent him. And that's what you got to understand. Your father is sending you to this place and to that place. He's planting you in certain situations. And when you show up because you know who God is and you know how stuff should be flowing and going, you show up, you're going to have something to say about it. A real believer can't walk into a situation where the, the manifestation of grace is not in operation and just sit there and be quiet. A real believer can't see people hungry and just be quiet. A real people can't see people broke, busted, and disgusted and just be quiet. Only selfish people do that. But people who, who fear the living God, people who believe that they are saved by grace, people who understand that salvation is literally for all, they will never walk into the situation of darkness and not say, I demand there has to be some light here. No matter what nobody say, it don't matter what they think, it doesn't matter that I'm the youngest, it doesn't matter that I don't have on the gear, it doesn't matter that I'm not trained in battle, I know what I know, this don't sound right, this don't look right. And there'll be haters that'll try to show up. And can I get real, real? That was his brother. Sometimes it'd be your own family. I mean, this wasn't just another soldier. This wasn't somebody he didn't, you know what I'm saying? It'd be, it'd be, it'd be if that, that was Sergeant O'Malley or somebody, you know, that was talking noise to him. This was his own brother. And, and tell me, what did David say that was wrong? He, all he said was, all he did was took up for the soldiers He's like, I'm taking it for you, the soldiers of God. But again, when people are operating in jealousy, envy, or fear, they're often deceived and they won't see things the right way. Let's just keep going. He said, what are you doing wrong anyway? Verse 29, what have I done now? <laughs> David replied, I was only asking a question. He walked over to some others and asked them the same thing. So David's just walking around trying to figure out what's going on. And he received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to King Saul. I guess he was asking a lot of people. <laughs> and so the king sent for him. Who sent for him? Who sent for him? It's amazing that how his positioning, because he has proper equipment, his position keeps changing. He has the right position in his soul. He has the right position in his heart. He has faith in God. But now he got, his, he got the right position in his mind. He's talking the right way. He's asking the right questions, apparently, because now he's went from the field to the king. See, sometimes you got to understand, to receive the position, the promotion, the, to get in, the, in front of the right people is not going to be by your plans. It's not going to be by your plans. He couldn't have planned this out. A shepherd boy couldn't plan to just, I'm going to do this and do this and do this, and then I'm going to be in front of the king. No, no. He was faithfully doing what he was supposed to do in the fields. He was minding his own business. And then he was given a task. And then when he showed up, he saw something that he knew wasn't right, and he spoke up. And he was just simply asking a question, just simply being who he was. But God had a plan for him. God had a path for him. God had a way for him, and he was just doing what? Just flowing and going. That's all he was doing. He didn't ask to speak to the king. But who he was and who you are will end you up right in the places that God has designed for you. And those places will be places, it'll be rooms of impact. Not just rooms of increase. It'll be rooms of impact. It'll be rooms where things can change. It'll be rooms that will bring God glory. But we got we to gotta be willing for that to be the result and not something that's going to bring me increase or something that's going to bring me glory because God has a way. Somebody say that with me. God has a way for you to succeed in life. But you got to be willing to submit yourself to his leading and guiding. And that's what's happening here. So the question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Verse 32. Don't worry about the Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. You're talking about some confidence. 
So David's position in his mind now has now turned from who does this guy think he is to I'm about to go whip him because he won't shut up. <laughs> I have now authority <laughs> based on this guy's stance and position against God. Verse 33, Saul said to him what? Read that with me. Three words. Don't be ridiculous. My brothers hated on me. Don't believe in me. Not a king. Come on, y'all, the head of state, the king now, doesn't believe in me. But did David let that stop him? Did David let that change his positioning? Did David let that change his attitude? Why? Because he had already been equipped. He had already been equipped in the fields with the lions. He had already been equipped in the field with the bears. He had already had evidence that no matter what nobody says, Saul wasn't there when I killed the lion. Eliab wasn't there when I killed the bear. I got results. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But he said, I got, I got evidence. So therefore, I got faith. I have expectation in what y'all can't see. I've seen my God move through these hands. I've seen my God rescue me from the impossible. I've seen my God operate through me to defeat what should not have been able to be defeated, and it was just me and him. So you may not understand why I think I can beat this giant, but I don't need you to understand because I know. I said, you don't need anybody else to understand based on what you know. God has already shown you. God has already uh, 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 been through the fire and through the battle with you. You've already experienced victory before. He's not stopping now. What, what causes somebody to have this type of attitude that says, when my family doesn't believe in me, when the, when the leadership of an entire country doesn't believe in me, I'm still pressing forward. The person who has spent enough time with God, the person who chooses not to allow fear to dictate their life, the person who has confidence in him and him alone is the person that can stand in the midst of any storm and say, I will not be moved. I will not faint. I will not cave in. I will not give up. I will not quit. Why? Because God is with me. And that's, that's, that's the underlying truth to this entire story. He's like, God is with me. Do you know that God is with you? Do you know that God is with you in your marriage? He's with you on your job. He's with you in your relationships. He's with you every day of your life. But the devil wants you to get your eyes off of him and get it focused on the giant. See, David didn't just defeat giants that day. He defeated fear of family. He defeated people talking down to him. He defeated insecurity. He defeated all other types of things. It wasn't just the giant that he saw. It was also the giants that were around him. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes family don't get you, do they? They don't understand why you, why you operate this way or why you see that or believe that. Sometimes the people at the job don't get you. But God does. He so said, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight who? This Philistine and possibly win. And then he, what did he tell them? You're only a boy. Keep going. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. You know what? I'd rather be a boy of God than a man of war any day. Let's keep going. But David persisted. Oh, if we could get some believers just to persist. He persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. Now, that's very interesting. I could almost see Saul smirking when he said that. This man got... Spears, shields, swords. We talking about blood and guts, and you talking about sheep and goats. But that wasn't his point. 
He said, I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with the club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. Do y'all, do y'all see that? Now, let me just say this. I think David was like slightly crazy at the same time. <laughs> you got to understand, if you want to be successful in life, you're going to have to have a little edge to you. It, it, this, this lifestyle of being a believer, this lifestyle of operating for God is not for the timid. It's not for the weak. I said it's not for the timid. I said it's not for the weak. Some of us got to get our courage up. Amen. He didn't say he wait till they attack him and then God defends him. He said, when they try to take what's mine, I go after them. Come on, somebody. You're not going to win by being on the defense all the time. You're not going to win by just sitting still and waiting for life to happen all the time. When the Bible says, after you've done all you can do to stand, just stand. You better get your butt moving. You got to get moving. When you see something that you know ain't right operating in your life, you better get to moving. I don't know what to do. You better get to moving that mouth. You better get to confessing that word. I don't know what to say. You better get to praying in the Holy Ghost. The perfect prayer language. But you don't just sit there and just take it and think you're being spiritual. I said you don't just sit there and take it and think you're being spiritual. Sometimes there can be real lives on the line. Oh, some of y'all, some of y'all got it, some of y'all didn't. I said, sometimes there could be real lives on the line. I wish you could understand how many times my wife's prayer has saved my children's lives. Because she didn't just sit there and take it. When bullets are flying. Come on, somebody. I've I, I, I seen a video of where one of my kids should have died. See, y'all think we play in church. I seen somebody empty a gun into one of their friends and they were standing two feet away and not a bullet was turned towards them. I seen them take their clothes off and begin to plug holes in their friends that they bled out on the ground. I seen them then praying for that friend and I'm telling you that friend's walking around just fine today, giving God glory. I'm not telling you what I think, y'all. We're not playing church. I'm telling you that you serve a real God But there's a real devil walking around waiting to kick your tail whenever he can because he wants to take you out. And if you don't get yourself properly equipped, you're going to be ill-positioned when the attack really comes. And then then you're going to turn around and say, God, why did this happen? And it's because you were just standing there instead of getting on the offense and declaring God's word. I don't care what your kids are doing. You better get to declaring his word. I don't care what they're smoking. I don't care what they're drinking. I don't care what pronoun they're using. You better get to declaring the word. I don't care what's going on in your marriage. You better get to declaring the word. I don't care what they say to you at the job. Who is this giant, this Philistine? This is the house of God. These are children of God. This is a marriage made by God. How dare anything show up saying anything against his place, his plan, his way. But see, you got to be a real believer. See, this, this, this message is just for the real G's. I mean, I mean, just the folks that are, that are real about this thing. This ain't for people who want to play church. This ain't for people who want to be theologically, philosophically, whatever. You know, uh, this ain't for people who want to be, uh, uh, you, you know, just to get your ears tickled or whatever like that. This is for people who want to get things done. This is for the folks that's tired of seeing the devil winning again and again and again. Yes, he's already defeated, but he's still winning some battles out here, y'all. And that's because a lot of believers don't realize how to obtain victory. I looked at that video, and it was amazing to me. I had heard the story, but but when you see it with your own eyes, I was like, why didn't they turn it on you? Holy Spirit said, you know why. So how did they shoot at that boy 15 times and they only hit him five times? How did all five of those bullets miss every vital organ? 
how? How is he out of the hospital in three days? How is he walking around in less than a month giving you glory? Because the devil's been defeated. I said the devil's been defeated. So you can have your plans, but you got to get God's power in operation. Something like that. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I, I would expect that to happen there. But not in the area we're in. But you can move your family where you want to move them. You can do everything you can, can to protect them. You better get them angels on assignment. You better get God's word in action. Because you can't be with them all the time. This ain't for fear. This is to help build your faith. He said, I go after with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. He said, you step to, step to man if you want to. You're going to die. You know how they say you keep shooting until the threat is stopped? <laughs> he, he didn't say I just club it to get it to go away. He said, no, 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 I club it to death. Why? Because it may try it again. So you need to understand that God is a God that when it comes to the things concerning you, he will shut that stuff off and shut it down completely. If something keeps coming back, then you ain't done. I said, if something keeps coming back, you ain't done yet. Get back in that prayer closet. Get back, get back in that word. You deal with that thing till it's done because God does a complete work. I don't know who that's for, but that's for somebody. Let's keep going. He said, I've done this both to lions and bears. <laughs> and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he, now he tells you why though. He's not just being cocky. For he has defied the armies of the living God. This man got beef with this other man just because he running his mouth, y'all. He didn't smack his mama. <laughs> he, didn't, he was just like, but you don't come and talk about God. I'm ready to fight a war because of what he said about the people of God. Keep going. The Lord, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the Philistine. My job is not to figure out how I'm going to win. My job is just to be positioned in the right place for the fight. My job ain't to figure out, do I got enough? Am I educated enough? Am I smart enough? Am I rich enough? Am I the right gender? Am I the right color? That ain't your job. Your job is just to show up. Because when you show up with the right positioning in your mind, with the right attitude, you'll be saying, God is going to take care of this. He said, the Lord, not my skills. The Lord, not my armor. The Lord, not my education. The Lord, not my strategy. The Lord will rescue me. I just need to be there. And he wasn't freaking out that there would be lions and bears. So why would he freak out that there's a giant? What he's facing wasn't the important thing. He had an attitude that said, it doesn't matter what I'm facing. It matters who I'm with. I want to ask you today, who you with? It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter what the debt is. It doesn't matter what the bill is. It doesn't matter what the issue is. It doesn't matter that you're facing divorce. That's just a giant. It doesn't matter that you're facing fear. That's just a giant. It doesn't matter that insecurity is trying to sit in. That's just a giant. Who you with? He's a God of the impossible. Doesn't matter how deep you're into the situation. Think about being in front of a freaking bear. Think about being in front of a lion that has already stole something from you and you about to take it back out of its mouth. Last I checked, lions and bears don't like giving up their kill. They don't like giving up their food. They don't like giving up what they have now claimed. And this boy, without 
arrows, without swords, without guns, <laughs> without bazookas, <laughs> without a tank. He said, I'm going to stand right in front of it because I got confidence in who I'm with. Saul finally consented. Saul finally gave in. He said, all right, go ahead. Now, I know he's probably thinking in his head, you're going to die. <laughs> you, boy, you're going to die, but hey, you're not even one of my soldiers, so it ain't no loss to me. <laughs> but he finally consented. He said, all right, go ahead. Let's keep going. And may the Lord, may, may, may he be with you. Because I ain't going with you. <laughs> I mean, that would have been the kingly thing to do, you know what I mean? Lisa, you know, I'll go, I'll go with you. Let's, let's do two on one, something. He said, may the Lord be with you. Verse 38. Then Saul gave David his own armor. <laughs> I'll give you that. A bronze helmet and a coat of mail. Keep going. David put it on strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn, what, such things before. You got to understand, to be successful in what God has called you to, to be successful in what he's called you to do, you go only to operate in the equipment that's God-made, not the equipment that's man-made. Man-made equipment will fail you. Man-made equipping will fail you. You want to only operate in what is God giving you. Amen? You can find a lot of good stuff. But I'm telling you, if you face a giant, you better have him on. So what did David do? David said, I'm not used to them. He protested to Saul. He said, I can't go in these. I can't fight in these. I'm going to fight the right cause. I'm in the right place, but this is the wrong equipment. And if I take the wrong equipment into the right battle, I'm still going to fail. I'm going to say that again. If you take the wrong equipment into the right battle, you'll fail. Not because God doesn't love you, but that ain't what he sent you there with. It's God's responsibility to equip you, not man. It's God's responsibility for all my military people to give you that loadout or that, that fit out that you need to go and do that particular assignment or battle. It, that's his job. You show it. You, he know what the, he know what the assignment is. He know what the mission is. You're a soldier. You just show up and say, all right, what I need for this? All right, okay, got that, got that. And you put it on and you go do what you need to do. It's the same thing. He's sitting there and he shows up. And Saul says, the king says, Here's what you're going to need. He puts it on and he says, ooh, this doesn't feel right. Why? I'm only used to one person equipping me. I'm only used to one person giving me what I need. This ain't it. So David took them off again. Keep going. And then what did he go and do? Instead of a sword, not just any sword, a king's sword. That had to be a good sword. That had to be a good helmet. That had to be a good coat of mail. Probably the best in the land, wouldn't you say, if it was for the king? He took all of that off and left it there, and instead he went and picked up five smooth stones from a stream. <sighs> he went and got rocks, y'all. He's putting his life in the hands of rocks. Not even the king's rocks. Just rocks he found out in nature. Sounds like to me God provides what man can't. Sounds like to me that man can make what he wants to make, but at the end of the day, all you got to do is go to what God has made, and you'll find what you need. He put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with the shepherd's staff and a sling, keep going, he started across the valley to fight the Philistines. Goliath walked out towards David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? He's talking about the shepherd's staff. 
and he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. That's, that's a lot of weapons. Remember, this is a giant, so these are big weapons. He said, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin. Now look at his weapon. But I come to you, not with the king's sword or shield or whatever else. I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven armies, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. He says, me being representation of God is better than any weapon you have. Me coming to you as one of his representatives, that's what in the name is talking about. Me coming to you just in who I am. Did you know that who you are is enough to defeat anything the devil throws at you? Did you know that just who you are is enough to defeat any weapons that the enemy has designed for you? Last I checked, it said that how many weapons will prosper? No weapon that's formed against you will prosper. Not, it didn't say you were going to have some other weapons that was going to be stronger than those weapons. It said no weapon that is formed against you. You're enough. You're enough. Why? Because of he who lives on the inside of you. Greater is he that lives in you than he that is in the world. Stop trying to go and make weapons of your own to fight his weapons. No, you're enough. All of the other things that you have as tools, that's just extra. You're enough because he's enough and he lives in you. Do you know who you are? Are you ready to be who you are? Because if you are, then you will be willing to march across the field against any giant because of God who is with you and in you. Forty-six. Got calm down. Today, <laughs> this guy, I love this guy. He said, "This ain't about to take long." Today, the Lord will conquer you. You, you hear how he's talking? He's still not stuck on him. It ain't about him. And he said, now I will kill you and cut off your head. <laughs> Lord's going to conquer you, but I'm going to kill you and cut off your head. You're going to be defeated by his power. And I'm just going to put you on display. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. See, we got to be willing to let that be the end result of everything we do. That got to be your motivation right there. Your motivation can't be, I'm going to know this, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to be that. No, it has to be God is going to get the glory. That'll bring a certain swag to you, but it'll also bring a certain humility to you. It'll bring a humbleness to you that'll cause you to listen more than you talk. Why? Because, God, this ain't about me. It's about the whole world knowing you. Verse 47. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with the sword, not with the spear. This is the Lord's battle. And he, he, he will give it to us. You're not going to win by the spear, by the sword, by man-made methods. You're not going to win by man-made plans. You're not going to win by man-made philosophies or ways or strategies. This was a horrible strategy to fight spears, swords, and javelins with rocks. That is not a wise military strategy. To go without armor, to go without backup, that is not a wise military strategy. But oftentimes, when you're doing things God's way, it just doesn't make sense. But it works. 
Let's finish this up. As Goliath moves closer to attack David quickly, ran out to meet him. See, that, now that was his method, wasn't it? When stuff was happening, he didn't wait. What did he do with the lion? What did he do with the bear? He said, I went after them. Is that how you operate? It's time for you to get on the offense. Again, we see it. Again, it's another threat, and he's going out to meet it. Reaching into his shepherd's bag. Get the picture. He's running at Goliath. And he's reaching into the shepherd's bag all at the same time. So he's in motion. He's moving, and he's attacking. Preparing to take out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. One shot, one kill. The stone sank in. He hit him hard. <laughs> and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. No weapon formed against you will prosper. He had javelins. He didn't get to use them. He had a sword. He never got to use it. Goliath had a spear. He never got close enough to use it. Those weapons were formed, but they weren't even in use. Don't be freaking out because of what you see people got. Don't be freaking out because it got a little power. Don't be freaking out because it got a little this or that. It don't matter. It can't even get used against you. It won't prosper. Fell down face on the ground. Keep going. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over because he said, I'm going to do what? I'm going to cut your head off. He's going to keep his word. He ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. Now he's using his weapons against him. Hmm, sound like a wealth transfer. I said it sounded like a wealth transfer. What they, you, what they set up to come against you, guess what? Hmm. I think I, I, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Somebody better get it. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Then the men of Israel, where they've been at this whole time. <laughs> then, then the men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines. See, you got to understand that you may be the only one. And you got to be okay with that. Everybody else may have their own ways. They may have their own strategies. They may have their own ideas. They may laugh at you. They may mock at you. They may sneer at you. But you know what? When the rubber meets the road and the, and the, and the bullets are flying and the stuff is really happening, they'll watch. They may not help you. You hear what I said? They may not help you. Ooh, he better duck. That, they, they, they may world start. They may be watching you. They may be recording you. They may not help you, but they're watching they can't, they can't help but watch. Don't be mad because they're watching and not helping you. Because when you win, I didn't say if you win. When you win, their hearts will be changed. So don't even get upset. Don't get, don't get upset with them. Be graceful. Be gracious. Why won't they help me? Why won't they just have me? They just scared. They're not, they're not, they're ill-equipped. Amen? But you're ready to go. They became inspired by his victory. And then they rushed after the Philistines. Now they're like, we can do this now. The giant's being killed. Chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road from Sherem as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army returned and plundered the deserted Philistine camp. But all of this started with the shepherd boy. A shepherd boy who was willing to only fight with what actually fit. To not fight with weapons and tools that weren't given to him by God, who only decided, all I need is God. All I need is his voice. All I need is the promise of what he's already done. To be successful, what you need to decide today 
is that you're only going to operate in God's power and plans. David took stones and slings. That was his equipment. But the main thing that he had was when he said, I come in the authority of the one who represents God. He had that and he had a testimony. He did it with the lion. He did it with the bear. And so this thing is going to be easy for me and him. So make a decision today that you're going to stay positioned in trusting God. You're going to stay positioned in that place of rest. That place that we read about, write the scripture down in Matthew eleven twenty six through 30. That I'm going to stay in that place where I depend only on God's grace. That I'm going to let that be the mentality that I carry. That not another day I'm going to sit here worried about what's going on. But that I'm enough because he who lives in me. Say this with me. My God has supplied all my needs. I am more than a conqueror. I will trust him. I will not go by man-made plans, but God-made plans only. I declare today that I am equipped for all that he has for me. In every battle, I declare victory in Jesus' name. Now come on and give God praise for that. So there's just a little bit more to this. We're going to talk on Wednesday about making sure that the equipment that you have <laughs> is from God, and then we'll finish up this message. But I tell you what, you win. You win. So uh, don't forget these messages are uh, they're on our website. They're on YouTube. They're on YouTube. Uh, we talked with a few of our guys the other day uh, at our men's breakfast, and we were looking at the fact, and they were talking about the fact that uh, how they need to go back and listen to these messages a few times just to get everything that's in there. Because, you know, when you hear it the first time, you don't, you don't get everything. But I'm telling you today that there is wealth. I go back and listen to them before all the stuff that's in them. So make sure you're getting and squeezing everything out of these messages so that you can have all the success that God has for you. Amen? Amen. Well, bow your heads with me real quick. I want to get you out of here so that you can get your Super Bowl on today. <laughs> Father, we thank and praise you again for this word that we've heard on today. And Lord, I pray right now for every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you that this message was prophetic in the lives of these, your precious sheep. I come against any counterfeit equipping that would try to take place. And I thank and praise you that we trust your plans and your plans alone. Now, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, or maybe you're online in our e-community or e-church and you want to get to know him, then I want you to repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus has died for me. I believe that grace has saved me. I believe that my sins are forgiven. And I declare today that Jesus is Lord of my life. I am born again in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for those who may have prayed that prayer. If you're here and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, then what we want you to do is at the end of the service, come on down. We'll uh, want to minister just a couple of things to you about the decision that you made. If you're online, you can give us a call at 281-463-0700, or you can email us at wcch at wcchouston.org. Um, I think there's a little QR code there that you can hold up to your screen, and it'll get you right to that same spot. Um, last but not least, before we go, if you want to worship God with your giving, you can do so. Remember, giving is a um, opportunity that we get to have. We're blessed to be a blessing. Amen? Tithing is fine. Offerings are fine. You do it exactly whatever God instructs you to do uh, in that process. Uh, if you want to do it uh, with an offering envelope, if you're here uh, live, then you can do that. If you want to do it through text to give, you can also do that. The number is 281-603-2888. 
You type the word give, put a space in whatever amount you want to sow. If you want to give online, you can use that QR code by holding your phone up uh, and it'll take you to our website, to our online area to give that way. So we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom financially. We thank you for an opportunity to make our lives about something more than money. Lord, we thank you that we get to give into lives being saved and lives being changed all around this world. We support your will. We support your vision. And today we come together to ensure that needs are met. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for the victory that comes as a result. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. Well, were you guys blessed today? Man, I, I'm telling you what, I'm excited. Uh, I, just, I just love sharing the word with y'all. You know, sometimes you got, you know, I talk about flowing with his plan. Man, I had this whole outline and stuff like that, but he, you know, Holy Spirit just does what he does. And it became more of an exegetical message of just walking through the scriptures. But sometimes that's what's needed. You just see what's in the scriptures and talk about it. And, uh, but, but make sure, go back and read that, that same area and, and read it in a couple of different versions of the Bible, Message Bible, Amplified, uh, King James, uh, easy to read version, and just watch it, the stuff that hops off the page at you uh, of, of what's going on there. So uh, continue to study and get all that God got you to get. Tune back in on Wednesday night. Uh, show up on Wednesday night, and we're just going to watch what God does. Amen? Amen. So who's going to win the Super Bowl, the Detroit Rams or the... Um, uh, Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> in Detroit, we got to take it what we can, y'all. That's how Stafford's in, so Detroit in, as far as I'm concerned. We got we to take it what we can. Uh, no, we, we just have, have a good time today. Uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, rest and, and just, just enjoy. Can y'all do that today? Uh, don't let don't, no drama. It, drama. Keep the drama people out your house, amen? And if it's, if it's the people that live with you, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> no, <I'm just> praying. <laughs> but, but you just have a good time today, man. And just enjoy the weather, enjoy the day, and just, just let God minister to you on today. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Father, we just thank and praise you again for this message. We thank you for this day. And I just speak blessing over these, your precious sheep, all throughout this week, Lord. I come against every plan of the enemy, and we stand in agreement that no weapon that is formed will prosper. We thank you that we are properly equipped and we are positioned right where you want us. So we get on the offense, and we declare blessing all throughout this week. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present your faultless before the Almighty God. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever. As you go, go blessed and go in his grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, we love you all. We'll see you all Wednesday. You are dismissed. All right, so I love the story of David, and, mm -hmm. and we always talk about David and his age, mm -hmm. and not to take that away at all, because that, I think that is a very important part of the story, but I think, you know, what you talked about, his, his character mm -hmm. and his heart, that speaks a lot mm -hmm. into it. Absolutely. You know, my, yeah. my daughter, um, I mean, it was maybe about a year, it was during COVID, and I'll never forget mm -hmm. that she told me that. Mm -hmm. She's like, you know, Mom, uh, you know, when Pastor Archie goes up there, mm -hmm. She goes, I think I can do that, oh, awesome. you know, and mm -hmm. so from at her age being nine, it's like she gets it. Yeah. She knows that calling. Yeah. And so I, and I think it's important because even with David in his age, he already knew what he had because he was mm -hmm. so confident going into going to Saul with mm -hmm. his brothers there and, and asking these questions to yeah. them, you know, and um, it was, I, I don't know. I just, today it was just what you talked about was mm -hmm. just so good because I think we miss the confidence and the heart that David mm -hmm. had. Um, he he went in there with confidence. Yeah. And you talked about the stones. Um, it's like God knew his talent, mm -hmm. and he knew what he had on hand. Yep. Mm -hmm. And God used that. Exactly. Yep. You yep. know, and I thought that was like so important because when Saul tried to bring in his own, 
Mm-hmm. Like you said, we try to bring in our own things and we try to do it our own way, mm-hmm. bring in man-made things. Mm-hmm. And God's like, I'm going to use what you have. Yeah, you. exactly. It's like all this other stuff is neat. And just because it's, there's an existence of another way, that doesn't mm-hmm. make it the way that he right. wants you to use. Just because there's other tools or people or talents or gifts or money or or weapons in this case or whatever like that he's like yeah that's there but that's not what i want to use you know right. he's only going to use what's going to bring him glory mm-hmm. and that's sometimes we can save ourselves a whole lot of money a whole lot of time and effort Seriously? by just saying wait a minute first of all did god tell me to do this thing this way because we have a goal in mind mm-hmm. that i'll need this equipping for later on when I go do whatever and God will be like I'm not even going to do it that way so don't even waste your money you know right. on going to that school or, or doing this that and other instead I want you to do this mm-hmm. you know because I can't tell you how many times I've went and got equipped or educated or whatever in some way thinking I'm going to need this and then God still puts me in the position to do what I need to do without ever, ever even using that thing. Right. And well, you know what we do as Christians sometimes too. We, well, no, it's just good to have it. Uh, you know, it's like, no. As a backup. Yeah, plan. yeah, as a just backup. Yeah, just to be saying, you know, God's <laughs> like, no, you just literally just wasted your time in that sense. And I love that, that David had the attitude, as you're saying, um, to not even waste his time with stuff. Right. You know, because because he could have, well, let me be respectful. Right. He could have wore it out to the battlefield and then took it off. Uh-huh. But he was like, I'm not even going to waste your time. I, I'm, I can't wear this. And no, even you know? that, <laughs> in re, even as res, in showing respect and authority, mm-hmm. he put those things on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure knowing well that he didn't need that Mm-mm. stuff. Yep, yep, yep. And, and, and we don't need to walk <laughs> out to battle with stuff that you already know. So it's just like, no, just be honest up front. It's like, no, you know, I tried it, you know, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be insecure or afraid because it's the king that let me try it. Right. You know, uh, cause sometimes I think people do that even in ministry, you know, somebody, Rachel, you're going to be our new youth pastor. Oh shoot. You know, <laughs> and you know, you're not called to do that, you know? Right. And, and it's like, but let me try it. Cause Archie and Pastor Archie and Melissa are asking me right. and then we go and do stuff. And then it's just like, no, that's the equipping is not there for that. And that's the wrong position. What has God told you to do? Mm-hmm. Oh man ministry and music, uh, prophetic gift, and all these other things that are still even coming out of you at this moment. And But you're, you're trusting God to take mm-hmm. you through that. And that confidence is there in Him because of that. That's the way it's supposed to flow. And that's how you find yourself victorious in life versus being in some neat position that some would want to be in right. that somebody else, again, me and man-made, tries to put us in. But instead we just say, nope, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'd rather just sit and wait. You right. know, uh, and then then do something I am not called to do. In and, and the thing is about it is that he put his his armor on, mm-hmm. and saying that it um, it must have looked big and heavy on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. then what's funny is that you said you know about how he uses he used his own sword, mm-hmm. and his sword was supposed to be way bigger because this mm-hmm. guy is so much taller. Yeah, exactly. So he had the strength. Oh yeah, to, to, to wield wear the that sword. Stuff. Yeah, exactly to wield that sword. If you can pick up that uh, yeah, Goliath sword, that's a very good point. Yeah, and yeah. then. He had he he could have used mm-hmm. you know King Saul's armor exactly yeah but, but but it wasn't what God wanted it wasn't what God gave him right and I thought about yeah. that today I was like wait a minute he was able to pick up his you know uh, Goliath sword so true so there's he could have yeah worn yeah. it yeah. but it was like all of this glamour and mm-hmm. stuff and it's like yeah. I don't need you to um to show and represent Saul mm-hmm. take yeah. all of the material off and mm-hmm. you're gonna represent and show me it's a very good point there's two things I'm hearing in that and one is is that just because you have the strength and ability to do something doesn't mean that that's how God wants to get it done right instead of wielding uh, a, a sword that was big and heavy and being able to say I was strong enough to pick it up right he used rocks. It's almost like a in, a in the slap of the face kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And then the <laughs> second thing I hear is is that um, instead of being able to say, I wore the king's armor and mm-hmm. the king getting any glory, it was only God that got glory. Right. Yeah, David didn't get glory necessarily. The only name you're yeah. gonna that's gonna get glory is, the is Lord. mine. Exactly. And, and not and not in a in a, um, an arrogant way no, at no, all. No, 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 no. Because I yeah. think that showed a mm-hmm. lot of people and even people today of this story mm-hmm. is that there's you don't need all of those things nope. you know i, nope. you know, I am there for you yep. i can provide for you yeah and that's what i was saying in the fact that you're enough you know it's like you're right. enough with god you know and Absolutely. even if you because how many of us don't have all the education right. we don't have all the equipping as far as the world's standards right but you come to church you spend time with god you're praying you're hearing you have a strong relationship with god right. and that's what we saw today that's enough mm-hmm. i have a strong relationship with him that's all I need for victory right. at the end of the day. So that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that was great. Amen.